Let's take a huge step back and think about why did SDN take off now compared to 20 years ago or 15 years ago. Even about a decade ago or so, SDN was slowly gaining traction, but over the past five years, SDN has taken over the world by storm. Why is that the case? It's a great question. I believe there are three big reasons. First, high bandwidth availability. So if you think about it, I'll give you my own personal example. About a decade ago, I had a 50 meg internet circuit at home. Today I have a one gig internet connection from my ISP. And it's pretty much for the same price. I don't think I'm paying a whole lot more than I did about a decade ago, but my bandwidth has increased 20 fold from 50 meg to one gig. Similarly, on the enterprise side of the house, both on the LAN and the WAN side, we have a lot of bandwidth hungry applications. We want low latency, we want better quality of service. For all those things to happen, ultimately we want to provide a great user experience. That means we need to have a lot of bandwidth available, both on the wide area networking side of the house and also on the LAN side of the house. So, we have come a long way over the past many, many years, and especially over the past five years, we have come to the point where bandwidth is no longer an issue. It just comes down to how we design and architect our networks. Second of all, we're seeing an evolution of silicon chip and ASICs. So basically, if you think about like the compute capacity. We're seeing the silicon chips getting smaller and smaller in size and footprint, but their capabilities are leaps and bounds ahead compared to where we were about a decade ago. If you look at switches today, a 24 port switch, and if each port happens to be, let's say 10 gig, that means we're gonna need 240 gig worth of uplink capacity from that switch to be able to provide a non-blocking fabric. And that's no longer an issue. Thanks to the advancement in silicon chip and ASICs, the throughput limitations we had on the back plane of the switches is pretty much gone. We can now do what's called non-blocking forwarding, which means we can use the full throughput of all the ports, all the way from the downlinks that are plugged into the endpoints to the uplinks and we no longer have choking points in our network. Back in the day, we did have choking points in the network, but those choking points are almost gone for the most part, at least in the data center realm. And finally, this is the big one, is the adoption of virtualization technology like virtual machines and vMotion and container workloads and the use of Docker and Kubernetes to manage all the container workloads. Virtualization and automation go hand in hand. And the reason for that is, so if you think about 20 years ago, if you needed a server, you would have to buy a big honking server from Dell or HP, and then you would have to wait a couple of weeks for it to arrive, and then you would install a certain application on it, and that's the only application that server ran. And then virtualization came along, which allows you to have a single physical server, but using a hypervisor, you can run multiple applications. So what that means now is you can spin up hundreds of virtual machines or even thousands of virtual machines in a matter of minutes to facilitate the connectivity for those virtual machines to be able to communicate with each other. It would be insane to think about having to go to every single network device and configuring that network device individually, that would be completely out of control. So instead, what you want, want to do is as these VMs come up, we want some sort of automated way of configuring all the relevant ports, the VLANs, our routing tables, everything that we need to do to be able to facilitate the use of that virtual machine so it can communicate with other virtual machines within the environment and also to the external world if need be. So I think these are the three big reasons 
why SDN has taken off like there's no tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.